my name is Keelan McDonald. I'm a product manager on Vertex AI. And as Gus mentioned, I'm going to be talking about how you can deploy Gemma for enterprise use, use cases on Vertex AI. So for the most part, we're going to be uh, taking you through a demo of uh, Gemma on uh, Model Garden and Vertex AI. But before we get into that, I just wanted to set a little bit of context on what Vertex AI actually is. So quick show of hands, how many of you are Vertex AI users or have used it in the past? OK, we got about half. All right, so I'll consider the rest of you kind of future fans here after you hear a little bit more. Um, so I wanted to, to kind of set a little bit of context about what is part of the Vertex AI stack. So first of all, uh, on Google Cloud, Vertex AI is our end-to-end -end AI ML platform. So you can do all sorts of stuff. Um, but starting from the bottom here, you can see that it's supported by our Google Cloud infrastructure. So that includes our TPUs and our GPUs. And you'll be hearing a lot more about that from our partners here at NVIDIA in just a moment. Moving up the stack, we have our model garden. And this is really the entry point where you can discover 130 models, open source, first party, and partner models, including Gemma. And then uh, tooling on top of that, like extensions, connectors, grounding, more. And then as you move up the stack, uh, applications for business users that are actually based on those uh, APIs and lower level components. So a lot of different features, a lot of different components. You're going to see a, a small sampling of those in the demo in just a moment. But just wanted to provide a little, little peek at what the ecosystem of Vertex AI is. OK. And one of the best things that we think uh, really empowers developers about Vertex AI is that we've really combined the best of predictive and generative AI in one platform. So um, if you are a Vertex AI user, you've probably been using it uh, before the days of generative AI, which uh, crazily enough has only been about a year. So maybe you're familiar with some of the, uh, the features that underline some of those uh, predictive tasks like model registry, collab enterprise. A lot of these tools work both for traditional predictive tasks as well as generative tasks. And the goal there is really to uh, create a consistent uh, and concise sort of experience for developers so that you're not sort of switching context a lot between those different AI paradigms. Uh, fin finally, we really strive to be both managed and open and modular. So I know that's a lot of uh, adjectives for you. But what we really mean is that as developers, we want to bring you choice. So if you want to uh, run an open framework like Ray, you can do that on optimized infrastructure in Vertex. If you prefer, prefer a more managed experience, you can also do that on Vertex. Again, really the goal here with these services and the way that the Vertex stack is built is to bring you as developers choice in terms of how you want to interact with these systems. Um, and then finally, as I mentioned before, um, none of this exists without that foundational layer of uh, purpose-built infrastructure. So we have GPUs, we have TPUs. All of these things are really set up to do training and inference best. And I think that's going to be really important as you think about your enterprise Gemma use cases, which I know you all are right now. Um, you're going to want to think about, how can I do those um, in the most cost-performant, efficient way? Um, some of the tools I'm about to show you hopefully will, will set you up for success with some of those goals. Um, and then finally, just a quick reminder, um, if you're in the Google uh, ecosystem as developers, Vertex is also really well integrated with a lot of the uh, platforms and tools that you know as a developer. So in addition to the fact that we've really tried to be developer friendly by setting up a lot of quick start libraries, creating free labs, uh, creating integrations with third parties like Llama Index, and uh, Langchain, we've also actually tried to integrate a lot better with a lot of our own developer platforms like Firebase and Flutter. So if you're familiar with those platforms, if you're an app dev, um, hopefully uh, the idea of being able to integrate our APIs into those uh, platforms uh, makes your life a lot, a lot easier. Oop. All right, so we're going to hop into a demo here. Um, what you're going to see. Uh, there we go, is actually an end-to-end -end, uh, deployment of Gemma starting in Model Garden. So this actually takes about three hours in real life. I'm going to attempt to do it in about six minutes before I get kicked off stage. Um, and what I want you to really take away from this is that um, if you're looking to deploy Gemma for your enterprise use cases, this is really going to be the most um, convenient platform as a developer. It's going to make it super easy for you to stand up those endpoints, monitor, test, do the tuning that you want to really customize the model, and um, make it super easy for you to maintain that overall. So let's take a quick look at what that looks like. So again, right here, we're, on, we're in the model garden environment. You can see at the top here, we're sort of highlighting our foundation models. And we've got our uh, beautiful new Gemma model card right there. Um, so you can enter this page either through Cloud Console. But if you are coming in through a third party, um, you can either come in through our partners at Kaggle here. So you can see there's an open in Vertex AI button here. Um, and as you heard from Hugging Face earlier, you can also reach this page through Hugging Face. So there's uh, two drop downs here. There's a tuning one um, as well as a deploy one. And those will both take you back to model garden and Vertex. So 
So regardless of how you come in, you're going to kind of land back on this home page here. So let's explore this model card a little bit more. I'm going to open this and see some of the details in the model card. Um, so uh, the footprint of a lot of these model cards looks pretty similar. I've got a nice overview at the top. I've got some use cases if I'm curious about what are the best applications of Gemma. As I scroll down, I'm going to get a little bit more documentation about how to get started. Um, you can see here that there's a little file path. Um, I'm going to click and copy that, and I'm going to need that in just a minute for my tuning job. But um, again, I'd, exp I'd uh, encourage you to explore these model cards a little bit more. You're going to get eval information. You're going to get information about safety, ethics, toxicity. Uh, of course, you're going to get lots of detailed information about the license. And um, for you enterprise users, I want to draw attention again that this is a very commercial-friendly license. So um, something to keep in mind as you're sort of uh, considering some of your ideas and applications for what Gemma might be. And then if we scroll back up here on the right, uh, we have this nice little kind of playground widget where we can test out our prompts. Uh, you heard earlier that this uh, endpoint is actually available on Kaggle too. So the nice thing is whether you come in through Kaggle or Vertex Model Garden, you're actually going to be testing with the same endpoint. So I'm just using a little, little silly test prompt here. I'm going to see how it goes. Um, again, quick reminder, this is an untuned endpoint. So it's getting the answer right, but maybe not in quite the right format that I would want. But we're going to kind of take care of some of that formatting in the tuning step here. So if I go up here, if I don't want to tune, I can go and directly deploy. Um, one of the nice features that we have here is this one-click deploy button. And this is going to allow you to uh, select pre-configured hardware. So if you don't want to spend a lot of hours researching the hardware, this is actually the recommendation that we have here for the most kind of efficient and effective way to deploy Gemma, given its size. But assuming that we do want to tune, and of course we do, um, we're actually going to open this notebook here, and we're actually going to get four different options. Um, so again, um, definitely I would encourage you to kind of explore the different ways you can tune and deploy these models. For the purposes of today, we're just going to uh, select this Vertex Tuning and Serving notebook and take a closer look here. Um, and so this is actually going to take us into Colab Enterprise. Just note, we're never really uh, leaving Vertex or Google Cloud. We're just sort of going into this, uh, this Colab Enterprise environment. Um, and we've got our pre-configured notebook here. There's a little bit about the fine-tuning method we're going to use, which is Laura. Um, a little bit of uh, information here about how to kind of consider the uh, deployment in terms of cost and other setup uh, features. This is really going to be uh, relevant, especially if you enter from outside Google Cloud. As, as cloud users, we're probably going to be a little bit more aware of some of these features. Um, but if you are coming in from, from one of those partners, um, it's some helpful context there. And right here, we're actually going to access our, uh, our Gemma model. Um, because we're coming directly from Google Cloud, we're going to select Google Cloud right there. Um, but you can collect, uh, select Hugging Face or Kaggle if that's where you're coming from. Um, and now we're just going to drop that, um, that path that I copied from the model card right here. And that's going to point us to where we actually need to get the model artifacts. Um, and with that, um, we're ready to download our model. We're just going to click and execute the cell here. This step takes about 20 minutes, so I'm going to use the magic of time lapse here to show it to you in about two seconds. Um, but at this point, we've got our model. So now we have Keelan's Gemma downloaded to my cloud project. At this point, I'm ready to fine tune. And so the nice thing is the notebook is actually already set up with a suggested uh, data set. We've got this, uh, this Open Assistant Guanaco data set, which is a pretty common one. If you want, you can go over to Hugging Face and select one of their 100,000 plus data sets, or you can use your own. Really depends kind of what your preferences are or what you're ready to do. Um, like I said, I'm just going to start kind of prototyping with some like, very basic presets here. I can also set up my, uh, my uh, output template here if I want to combine columns from a spreadsheet, say, into a JSON blob. But again, I'm just going to use the presets for now just to, to keep things simple. So at this point, I'm just kind of setting up some, some quick kind of uh, presets for my fine tuning. This is actually a real time step here, so pretty quick. Um, and then we get into the fun stuff, where we actually select the hardware to do the fine-tuning job. So again, um, the nice thing about the notebook is that the notebook is going to give you some guidance in terms of what we think is the most kind of cost-efficient and effective way to do this. So again, um, we're recommending that you uh, lower the precision mode to 4-bit and that you use an L4. We're going to uh, uh, kick off the fine-tuning job. And again, um, that step takes about 20 to 30 minutes, maybe an hour. And now we've got our fine-tuned model. Um, and at this point, we have our nice little prediction box. Again, this is just another environment where you can test your prompts. So um, you've got a little pre-written prompt there that you can test. I'm just writing a very uh, silly little prompt to make sure that the model's honoring the um, token adjustments as well as uh, lowering the temperature to see if I can get kind of a more uh, concise and factual answer here. Uh, hopefully, you're a slightly more creative prompter than I am, but this will give me a little bit of a sense of whether the model's doing what I want. 
I think that's a pretty good description of a banana. I'll leave it to you to judge. Um, and that's it. Um, so I've got my tuned model here. I can do more experimenting. I can explore some of the other tuning methods here. Um, really, there's a number of different steps. If I decide that this model is not for me, or I want to retune it, or I just want to explore something else, I can also break everything down with this cleanup resources tab. And this essentially just deletes everything and makes sure that you don't get charged for running that model anymore if you don't want it. Right now, we're back in model registry, and so I have my endpoint, which means that if I have an application and I want this to be the back end, it's ready to go. Um, you can see here, this is the sample request. That's what the API request would look like if I was using this endpoint uh, to power my, my enterprise app. Um, and if you click in further here, you can actually see that we get to a nice monitoring page. And this gives you a lot of really detailed information about how your endpoint is performing in terms of, uh, uh, in terms of accuracy, in terms of uh, predictions served. You'll see there's only a couple uh, little uh, artifacts there from my samples, but as you scale to uh, an enterprise level, you can imagine that if you're getting thousands, maybe even millions of requests, um, an experience like this is really helpful to understand how you're performing and if you have the right uh, hardware available for your enterprise needs. And with that, we go back to Model Garden and we can start the whole thing over. So the great thing about Model Garden and with Gemma is that you can uh, create many different variants, you can try other models. That workflow looks pretty much the same regardless of the open model that you select. And so um, this is really designed to be uh, the most convenient way for developers to find open models and tune them and deploy them for their enterprise use cases.